Hello everyone. Um, this is another example where we uh, study the Nash equilibrium. Um, and this simple, nice uh, game also leads to a, a well-known theorem, which is called median voter theorem. So here is the game. So there are two players, uh, two political parties. Uh, these political parties are choosing their ideological locations before the ele elections. So choosing ideological locations. Uh, so let's denote them x1 and x2. Well, for simplicity, let's assume that the location has to be in between 0 and 1. So what does that mean? That means in this country, all the voters are distributed or located in this range, 0, 1, where the 0 represents the extreme leftist ideology and 1 represents the extreme rightist or conservative uh, ideology. Um, so consumers, not consumers, I'm sorry, <laughs> the voters are distributed over this 0, 1 interval and uh, it doesn't have to be uniform according to some probability distribution, all right? For example, if this is the probability distribution, sort of the majority of the voters are sort of more uh, conservative. Uh, and if this is the, pro uh, the distribution, here, for example, the voters are more uh, sort, of, uh, uh, sort of a leftist. Okay, so let's keep this one. So any uh, probability distribution, would just uh, be fine. So let's suppose uh, f of x denotes the uh, sort of uh, ratio proportion of voters whose ideology is, I mean, the location of their ideology is less than or equal to x. All right, so therefore f of zero is zero, f of one is one. So this is a cumulative distribution function. So this is a probability PDF, the probability distribution function, but let's suppose the, uh, the, this, this probability distribution function has some cumulative distribution function. So here, what I care is in fact, this x star point where f of x star is equal to one half. Uh, we call this, median voter, all right? So for example, if this is the location of X star guy, that means half of the voters are sort of more uh, conservative than him, and half of the voters are le uh, less conservative or more leftist than him, all right? So he's basically dividing uh, the population into two groups, uh, sort of conservatives versus, you know, more conservatives versus less conservatives, etc. Okay, so, uh, all right, so in this world, in this uh, uh, environment, two political parties are choosing their locations in between 0 and 1, right? So each has uh, infinitely many strategies. So this is strategy of political party 1. This is also equal to the strategy of political party 2. Obviously, the political parties may choose exactly the same location. Uh, obviously, the probability of this event is 0, but, well, I mean... Uh, they may choose exactly the same location, in which case, obviously, the voters are going to be indifferent between the political parties. So here, the voters are not players um, because there are infinitely many of them. And, you know, one voter is never going to change the outcome of the uh, uh, election. And so uh, what happens is that the voters always vote for the political party that is closest to their uh, ideological location. So for example, if I am a voter zero, I'm going to vote for the political party that is closest to me. And basically this is the idea of all the uh, uh, voters. So here, once again, the voters are not strategic players. That's partly because uh, of simplification assumption, but it also makes sense because in a general election, like if there's like millions of people, they're like infinitely many people in real life, right? But if there's like millions of voters out there as a single voter, there's no way I can change the election outcome, right? So therefore voting truthfully, meaning voting 
uh, for the party that I feel closer to myself is sort of the optimal thing to do. But anyway, uh, this is a simplification assumption we have. So we're going to assume that voters just simply vote for the political party that is closest to themselves. Okay, so um, what else? If the political party wins, let's suppose, right? The political party is going to get a uh, plus one payoff. If loses, uh, loses, well, the political party is going to get zero payoff. Um, that's it. Um, what else? Well, again, in, in real life, it's a zero probability event. But if, just a second, uh, if the voters are indifferent between two parties, um, or if, oh, I, I forgot to say this, I'm sorry. Uh, but, but that's sort of the general rule, right? Uh, the majority uh, of the, the party who gets the majority of the votes uh, wins the election, all right? Um, so if uh, two parties uh, share the votes equally, perfectly equally, again, it's, it's sort of impossible in real life maybe, but in this simple environment, I mean, it may be possible, meaning half of the voters vote for party one, half of the voters vote for party two. Well, in this case, we're going to assume that there's going to be tie. And in this environment, we're going to toss a coin. And then this coin toss it will determine who is going to win. All right. Or, um, you know, uh, in, in case of tie, each party is going to get one half payoff. All right. Uh, the numbers doesn't really mean anything as long as everybody prefers to win. And then the second best is tie. And then the third best is the or the worst alternative is losing the election. All right. So in this game, the question is, what is the Nash equilibrium? Uh, where, what location are these parties going to select? This game is very similar to the location game we analyzed earlier. It, the location game was simpler in a sense that there were sort of five locations and sort of discrete number of players. Uh, but here, although they're like infinitely many strategies, although things may look a bit more complicated, I think the analysis is actually simpler and much shorter. And here is how we are going to show the uh, approve or find the Nash equilibrium. Well, the first claim that I'm going to make is that in any Nash equilibrium, there might be more than one, in any Nash equilibrium, uh, let's suppose X1 is the location choice of uh, political party 1 and X2 is the location choice of political party 2, then in any Nash equilibrium, X1 has to be equal to X2. All right. So how do we prove that? Well, kind of simple. Uh, suppose for a contradiction, suppose uh, for a contradiction, x1 is not equal to x2. What does that mean? One of them is greater than the other. All right. So without loss of generality, without loss of, ge so without loss of generality, x1 is less than x2. So in this case, for example, x1 is here, x1, x2 is here. So when you look at this picture, uh, what I see is that all these voters are going to vote for uh, political party one because they're closest to the political party one. All those voters are voting for political party two. And, you know, they're going to basically split this. So, you know, half of those are going to vote for X1, half of those are going to vote for X2, uh, I'm sorry, uh, political party two. So it seems, you know, when you look at this rough shape, uh, political party two uh, is going to win this election because, uh, you know, they, they get the majority. But look, this conclusion relies heavily on the assumption of F. Maybe this is not F. F is maybe some, some other functional form. In fact, I don't know the functional form of F. Uh, so can I prove my uh, sort of claim without making any specific assumption about F? The answer is yes. How so? Well, remember I assumed without loss of generality that X1 is less than X2. In this case, there are two possible scenarios. Possible scenarios. Uh, so case one, I'm going to say. Um, uh, it's, it's tie, meaning uh, there's no winner. And case two, 
obviously uh, one winner. Which one? I don't know. I, to be honest, I don't care. So in case of tie, what does that mean? That means half of the voters are going to vote for party one, half of the vo voters are going to vote for party two. In this case, uh, each party gets one half utility payoff. Agree? Yes. So, for example, let's suppose this is the case. I mean, don't look at the probability distribution because it may... Uh, I mean, the, my arguments has nothing to do with the probability distribution. So let me just clean this and then redraw it to 0, 1. So let's say this is x1, let's say this is x2. So this is the majority, uh, I'm sorry, this is the tie case, all right? So half of the voters go for x1, half of the voters go for x2. So if player one moves towards uh, political party two, what happens uh, as you move towards x2, for example, somewhere here, x1 prime, let's suppose, well, this time, the voters that are going to be closer to you, the number of voters that are closer to you will definitely increase. Why is that? Well, because previously those voters were closest to you and you were sharing half of those voters in between X1 and X2. Now, what I'm going to get, I'm going to get even more than half. All right. And so I am basically increasing, I mean, Again, it's like you don't really have to uh, need the functional form for f, but what you can say, um, the, you know, parties, party one or two, doesn't matter, uh, parties can increase their votes by getting closer to opponent, all right? And hence, ensure or guarantee, guarantee winning the election, which means plus one payoff. And hence, uh, if x1 less than x2 leads to a tie, one of those uh, uh, political parties, it could be uh, party one, could be party two, has incentive to deviate and win this election. How? By getting closer to the opponent. So therefore, um, in case of tie, uh, one of the players, at least one of the players, is not best responding the other player. And hence, there cannot be a Nash equilibrium. All right. What if, in this case, there's one winner and one loser? Well, in this case, the loser, whoever this is, can choose exactly the same location, same location of its opponent. Why so? I mean, what's the benefit of doing this? If you choose exactly the same location of your opponent, that means, uh, you know, both political parties have the same location. And so the the, the voters are going to be indifferent between party one and party two. And hence, uh, you're going to get 50% of the votes. That means there's going to be a tie. And because of the ties, your payoff will be one half rather than zero, right? The loser gets zero. But if the loser deviates to the same location of the opponent, it can increase its payoff to one half. All right. So loser can choose exactly the same location of its opponent and hence and thus achieve uh, payoff of one half, which is a higher payoff. So that means the loser is going to regret and hence we cannot have a Nash equilibrium. All right. So these aren't only two cases, right? Whenever X1 is less than X2, you know, it's going to be either tie or one winner. In, the, in case of tie, any uh, player has incentive to deviate. In case of one winner, that means there's going to be a loser, and this time loser has incentive to deviate. So that means there will always be someone who will regret this outcome. And so, therefore, this cannot be Nash equilibrium. All right, second claim. Hold on a second. 
So the second claim is this. Uh, an Nash equilibrium is such that x1 equals x2, which is equal to x star. And remember x star? x star was the point where uh, f of x star is equal to one half. Well, why so? I mean, how do I prove this? So suppose for a contradiction, uh, x1 equals x2, which is less than x star. Look, I'm not going to reconsider x1 different than x2 case. I already did this, all right? Um, so therefore, let's keep it. I mean, in any Nash equilibrium, x1 has to be equal to x2. All right, uh, but let's suppose it's less than x star. So what does that mean? That means if I need to re-graph this, so let's suppose x star is this guy, meaning 50% of the voters are here, 50%, and the remaining 50% of the voters are here, and x1 equals x2 is exactly this point. So uh, in this case, it's a tie, right? Because both uh, 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 political party are exactly in, in, in the same location. So uh, both parties, both party gets one half payoff. However, if deviate, if deviates, uh, party I, right, for example, if party one deviates somewhere closer to X star, for example, uh, well, it doesn't have to be exactly X star, but somewhere, somewhere here, all right, so this is X one prime. So uh, party one, so if, if deviate, party one is going to get what? Um, all these voters. And party two is going to get the remaining. And they're going to split in half these two voters. Well, the thing is, the political party one is going to get more than 50%. How do I know that? Because all the voters uh, beyond x star and between, I'm sorry, uh, uh, between x star and one, uh, the ratio of those voters is 50%, right? Because that's the median voter. And so I am, I mean, as political party one, I'm getting more than this. So that means how much more, I don't know. Maybe this is just 5%, but who cares? Political party one is going to get the majority. So if deviate, uh, party one can win and get one payoff. So what does that mean? That means uh, one player is regretting from this outcome. And hence, uh, this cannot be Nash equilibrium. Can't be, can't be Nash equilibrium. All right, I'm sorry, this is terrible handwriting. So this can't be a Nash equilibrium. All right. But remember, I suppose for a contradiction that x1 is less than uh, x1 equal x2, which is less than x star. What if x1, so if x1 equals x2, which is greater than x star, well then, well, let's redraw it. So this is the picture I have. Let's leave x star the same location. So let's suppose x1 here, x2 here. All right, so remember this is 50% and this is the remaining 50%. So in this case, once again, because both parties are uh, located in the same location, uh, it's a tie and uh, each uh, party gets uh, one half payoff. However, by deviating farther from uh, x2, party one can win the election and get payoff one. So how so? Uh, so party one is not gonna deviate to here because if you deviate to here, uh, all those voters are going to be farther from you, so they're going to vote for party two. So you're going to lose the election for sure. Party one, however, is going to deviate somewhere here. 
uh, towards the uh, median voter. So for example, right here, X1 prime. So what's going to happen? All those voters are going to vote for party one because they are feeling party one closest to them. So that means... I don't know what the, 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 the new ratio is, but that's more than 50%. And so party one can get the majority of the votes. All right. And hence, hence this X1 equals X2 greater than X star can't be a Nash equilibrium. So basically that's it. What I did prove is the following in two steps. Well, in, you know, there are sub steps, obviously, but in two main steps. Step one, I show that if there is a Nash equilibrium, this Nash equilibrium, uh, the parties must be uh, a, sort of end up in a tie. So they must choose the same location. And I proved this by contradiction. So suppose uh, they're, you know, they don't choose the same location without loss of generality, x1 is less than x2. Here, without loss of generality means the following, guys. Uh, if I did this analysis by assuming x2 less than a a a a x1, the same argument or the similar arguments, not the same, but similar arguments would actually work. All right. So therefore, I, in order not to repeat myself, I just said without loss of generality, just consider this case. So in this case, one of the parties will have incentive to deviate. If it is tie, both players will have incentive to deviate. If, if, if there's a winner, well, then the loser has incentive to deviate. So it's important to know who has incentive to deviate or who will regret. So therefore, we cannot have an, an equilibrium where, you know, x1 is less than x2. They have to be the same. Okay, well, then the second argument is such that the Nash equilibrium must satisfy this. Both um, uh, parties are choosing the median voters location. Well, suppose for a contradiction that they choose the same location because again, you know, choosing different location, I already did this argumentation. So let's choose, let them choose the same location, but this location is less than X star, meaning it's on the uh, sort of uh, uh, behind, I don't know if the you know, behind front is the correct, but in the right of. Uh, in, in the left side, uh, in the left side of X star. In this case, uh, any party has incentive to, to deviate. How or where? Somewhere slightly closer to the median voter. Well, what if uh, the, the voters, I'm sorry, the, the political parties are choosing the same location, but towards the more conservative or more rightist uh, uh, ideology? Well, in this case, once again, one of the parties, here I argued that it's party one, but party two also has incentive to deviate or will regret. So one of the parties has incentive to deviate towards, again, the median voter. All right. So therefore, this cannot be Nash equilibrium. This cannot be Nash equilibrium. Uh, I mean this. So there's only one possibility. Well, this has to be the Nash equilibrium if there is one. All right. And in fact, um, we didn't prove that this is a Nash equilibrium. So that should be uh, the, the, the third step. Show that this is a Nash equilibrium. And in fact, it's rather simpler. So I'm going to skip that step. Well, why is this Nash equilibrium? Uh, because when both parties locate themselves at X star, all right, uh, what we have here is uh, there's going to be tie right? And uh, the, the, the players have no incentive to break the, well, maybe I should argue, uh, not formally maybe, but informally, let me sort of argue why this is a Nash equilibrium. So let's, this is X star. So this is where the 50% of the uh, voters are located. This is 50% of the voters. Remember, this depends on the distribution of the voters. So it doesn't have to be uniform. So therefore X star doesn't have to be in the middle. Um, so here, when this is x1 equals x2 equals x star, each party is going to be getting payoff one health. All right. Why? Well, because the, uh, there's going to be tie. Okay. Can party one or two, doesn't matter, just pick one. Can party one deviate and get a better payoff? Well, if party one deviates somewhere 
you know, to the left of uh, median voter, what's going to happen? Well, all these voters are going to vote for party one. And, you know, some voters here, uh, you're, they're going to split uh, the party one and two will split the voters here. And all these guys are going to vote for party two. Who cares? The thing is, remember, this entire part was 50% and now you're getting less than 50%. And in fact, uh, yeah, strictly less than 50%. And so the other party is going to get more than 50%, which means when you deviate as party one, away from the median voter, actually you're going to lose the election. Previously, you know, when you pick the same location, you were getting one half payoff. But when you deviate, you're going to get zero payoff. Well, okay, this didn't work. What if I deviate to the right? All right, so leftist policies are no good. But what about more conservative policies? Well, once again, if political party one selects here, this time all these guys and half of these guys are going to go for party two which is more than 50%, that means party one will also lose in this case. So therefore, well, I mean, in this spectrum, ideological spectrum, it's just one dimensional, right? So you cannot jump up. So in this spectrum, you, I mean, mm, deviating away from the median voter is going to cause you to lose the election, which you do not want to. Um, so therefore, uh, the, the political party one and symmetrically political party two will not regret from this uh, outcome. You see the point? All right. So this third step basically shows that this outcome, this strategy profile where um, uh, political party one and political party two select their location exactly the same as the median voter is the only Nash equilibrium of this game. And so, well, yes, uh, we call this uh, sort of conclusion as a median voter theorem because in this simple environment, it shows that the political parties, when there are two of them, if we had more than two, well, then things would be different. But when we have two political parties and when the political spectrum can be represented by this simple platform, uh, well, then uh, political parties would actually would like to uh, locate their ideological location, it's closer to the median voter. Um, that's it.